the place is in real rough shape. He goes up to where the farmhouse used to be, and it's just a big pile of lumber, looking like it was pulled apart by some big wind. He looks around for the barn, but it's just mainly charred stumps and nothing but some makeshift shelters for the animals. All except the pig, who had this real purdy, brand new sty. I tell you, that pig lived better than Ivana Trump. And that pig was in a beautiful, brand new electric wheelchair, which he needed, but would not have a no hind legs or nothing. Which got that insurance fella thinking that maybe he had this farmer dead to rights. Mm. So he says, why don't you confess what's going on here with you and this pig? The farmer kind of rears up and says, Virgil ain't no dirty old pig. That pig is the smartest, the bravest, the most wonderful pig in the whole wide world. And he tells him how one night his whole family woke up to hear this pig grunting out in the yard. <coughs> grunting that woke the whole house up. Next thing he knows, there's this banging at the back door, like some giant mutant woodpecker. Of course, it brought the whole household downstairs just as that pig kicked the door in. So this farmer grabs his shotgun and is about to make some instant bacon. When he notices, there's a twister coming right for the house. The farmer got his family down to the storm cellar just before that twister came and leveled the house. Well, this insurance man is studying this farmer's face. He sure don't seem to be lying, but he still wants to know about that suspicious barn fire. Seems the old Guernsey kicked a lantern over, and that old barn lit up faster than the parson's nose on a Saturday night. There was no way that farmer could have got all the animals to safety by himself. But that pig pitched in and got all the animals out of there. Then just when they thought all the animals were safe, they hear this of baby chicks from inside the inferno. Without a thought for saving his own chops, this pig grabs hold of a burning rope, hoists himself up to that blazing hayloft, gathers up those chicks in his arms, and dives straight into the water top. A perfect double gainer. Except for the tuck, which wasn't great on account of him having pig legs. At least at the time he did. And the farmer yeah, explained he, he spent the insurance money on the wheelchair because he owed his life and the lives of all his animals to that pig. Mm. But there's just one more thing bothering the insurance man. How come that old pig don't have no hind legs? And that dirt farmer just looks this insurance guy right in the eye, very serious like, and he says, a pig that good, you don't eat all at once. <laughs> That's a true story. Happened to a friend of a friend of mine. And you can only hope your next meal can do as much for you. This is a true story. It happened to a friend of a friend of mine, Ollie. He was the kind of guy who knew exactly which wine to order with chopped liver, or how long your tie should be so it didn't get caught in your fly. <laughs> oh, the girls were pretty sweet on Ollie. Heads turned whenever he came down the street. Now, it just so happened that Ollie was between adventures, a female, that is, when Imelda struck. Now, by all accounts, Imelda was one of the classiest dishes in town. You might say she was the mayonnaise in the tuna sandwich of life. Ollie jumped in front of Imelda and he said, Dinner, tonight, la frite francaise, eight o'clock. Imelda paused and then she smiled that smile she had and down the street she strolled, not looking back even once. Ollie wanted everything to go right with the evening. So he figured to show up early at La Frique Francais, the fanciest restaurant in town. Ollie demanded the best table in the house and fresh flowers and a tablecloth. And are you ready for this? <laughs> Clean cutlery? Oh, Ollie was starting to get up the nose of the maitre d', Max. You see, Max was also the owner, chef, and dishwasher at La Frique Francais. And nobody ever went to bed hungry being nice to Max. But Ollie didn't know that. Ollie told him that tonight was a very special night for him and a very special lady and that tonight 
Business as usual just wasn't going to be good enough. Max was just going to have to do a little bit better. Max thought for a moment and then very calmly, very serenely, very graciously told Ollie that he was a fool for not realising Ollie was a man of the world. A man for whom the best is just regular fare. If Ollie would allow him, he'd prepare something special to delight and amaze Ollie and his lady fair. Max whisked off the tablecloth, applied a fresh one, lit the candle stuck in the wine bottle and produced a basket of breadsticks. Ollie smiled appreciatively as Max dashed into the kitchen. Just then, Imelda entered. Oh, oh, she was a vision in parachute silk. Imelda looked around and recognised mm. Ollie instantly. The breadstick stuffed up his nose were a dead giveaway. <laughs> she laughed at his little joke, hoping those weren't the only breadsticks at the table. Meanwhile, Max was busy dumping old dishwater, the grotty stuff from the sink drain, and some coffee grounds into his special soup. Yes, Max had something very special planned for his surly customer and his important date. Then he snorted and hacked and filled up just the thing. He gobbed it right into the centre of the soup. A loogie the size of a matzo ball bobbed in the bowl. He took a twist of parsley for garnish and called for a waiter. Uh -oh. Gleefully, he peered through the door of the kitchen, watching as Ollie and his young date enjoyed the first course. When he saw Ollie look up and wave oh. to him, Max couldn't resist going over to enjoy the moment more completely. But if you thought Max was stunned when Ollie told him it was the best soup he'd ever tasted, you should have seen his face when Imelda looked up from a bowl and said, Daddy, this soup is delicious! This is a true story. It happened to a friend of a friend of mine, Ollie and his father-in-law, Max, the ones who run that very successful restaurant. It's Snot Just Soup. This is a true story. It happened to a friend of a friend of mine. Stephanie's class was on a field trip to the farmland outside of town. They were going to visit the grape juice factory. She was very happy. Grape juice was Stephanie's favorite drink of all. She drank it every day with her breakfast, lunch, and supper. And now she was going to visit the factory. She wore her favorite purple dress for the occasion. The school bus pulled up to the door of the building and the kids piled out. Stephanie was so excited, she thought that she was going to burst. A nice man from the factory gave each kid a safety helmet and plastic safety goggles to wear. Then the tour began. They watched the trucks bring the grapes in from the farm. The grapes were dumped into a big bin where sprayers sprayed water all over them to wash them off. Then they went up, up, up on a conveyor belt to the mixer where they got all squished up. The grapes, not the kids. Stephanie was a bit disappointed by this. She'd sort of imagined that there'd be people squishing the grapes with their feet, just like she'd seen on TV. But there was only a machine at the factory. It looked sort of like a giant kitchen mixer. It sure smelled good, though. Stephanie took a big sniff. 